What's up, fellers? In this edition of Ethan the Fence Man Mechanic Guy, we're uh, working on the, uh, I think it's a 2017 Chevy Malibu with the inline four with the tiny turbocharger. <clears throat> and if you saw in the last video on this guy where we went, drove a couple hours in a U-Haul to rescue on it, she runs and she drives, and it does break, it just don't break well. So the pedal is really high, and essentially it feels exactly like a power brake car with no power brakes. So lots of excessive force to push the pedal down, and she don't travel down very far before it locks the wheels up. So, in diagnosing on her, it also looks like we got a weak battery issue had to jump it off to get her squeezed into the shop but anyway onto our braking issue she's throwing a code i believe it's the po556 something like that i'll put a i'll put a, a photo of the uh of the code on my scanner up on screen if i remember to anyway hey look i did it anyway <clears throat> what that code means is low or no vacuum pressure at the booster and this is a turbo car so the engine doesn't produce vacuum and we still have a vacuum brake booster back there that means she got to get vacuum from somewhere and since this thing is under pressure under boost doesn't produce vacuum what you have to do is right under the intake tube here you got to put in a little mechanical pump. This is a vacuum pump, GM part number, and, 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 and it's a lot of numbers. I think I have a photo for that. If I do, you'll you'll see it. But anyway, it's a very common um, GM vacuum pump, and apparently this is a very common problem too. The pumps got worn. More accurately, I'm pretty sure what happens is there's a reed valve in here that either gets worn out or it gets dirty and uh, gets all clogged up and she won't make the vacuum anymore so we've got the code and i came in here and i pulled the line off of it and when i pulled the line off there was no noise like it was under vacuum and then i started the car and you can put your finger over the pump hole and uh, it produces zero of the vacuums so we got a new pump now we're going to take that one out and what's involved in that is really not too bad but it just looks like a lot because there's a bunch of bits but you got to take the battery out which is just a couple of i think 10 millimeter bolts here and there this one's a little bit finicky because the uh the top to that ecm stays in there and it like lifts up as that comes out <clears throat> then you can take that cover off of the battery then there's uh, i think it still has a tie down and then when that's out of the way we may be able to work around the intake tube, or we might have to take the tube out of the way. But after those two things, you got the direct access. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. After you get that uh, metal cross brace guy out of the way, it's 10 millimeter um, nuts to get your battery connections loose. And there's this electronic doodad. You'll have to get in here with a flat nose and depress that little release clip and then wiggle on it and it'll slide upward off of that and then when we hold our electronics out of the way we've got our battery cover that's so prominent these days for some reason because who, who wants to be able to read the info on the battery when the guy at the auto parts store is doing your battery test Meh. anyway all right now with the battery removed you can get sight of the back side of that vacuum pump. I've got my intake tube taken loose up there. That's a pretty simple release guy. You see this tab, stick your flat head in here, it slides out pretty far and then she'll come right off. Now it looks like I've got three mounting bolts. Let's see, one here. Looks like a mounting bolt and a uh, bracket to hold my intake tube up there so i think when that one comes out i'll be able to move this guy out of the way a little bit and 
way back down that looks like the third mounting bolt now i'll get those three fasteners loose and then i believe the uh pump will just come right off the end of the camshaft i'm pretty sure that's how this guy is driven it's not like electric motor i think he keys in to the end of the cam okay so as it turns out when you take this 10 millimeter bolt out and get this bracket up out of the way that reveals the third half inch mounting bolt so there's one there one down low and one over here and this one down low looks like it'd be a pain to get to but you can lift up on that rad hose and slide with an extension right underneath and line straight up with it without removing the battery tray or unhooking that radiator hose so that's nifty and i also discovered my third mounting bolt here the one that's under that bracket it was really loose i was able to turn it like two full turns to you know seat it back down so that that might have something to do with why it wasn't working right although i don't think it should though with the other two bolts holding it straight up it seems like the one bolt being loose should not affect the pumpy pump operation either way though probably shouldn't have loose bolts okay <clears throat> well so when you take those three bolts out you can just get in here with a prying tool and pop the seal loose and she'll come right off and i uh Hmm. Mm-hmm. Get this. I probably should have got this out of here first. But anyway, yeah. You you see that? That's uh that's not good. That's uh that's bad even. I sure don't like the uh sight of something that spins off of the cam being busted into a bunch of pieces like that. When I looked up this job on YouTube, the feller who replaced his pump, it the snout wasn't all snapped and exploded. It just, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll get that out of there and check for the damages. Okay. Well, I've reached up into that hole with my finger and pulled out a few broken pieces. But... I know that there's uh, at least one more sizable chunk caught in here I can't get out. <clears throat> and I'm sure there's more pieces that we can't reach from right here. So, normally, if your vacuum pump didn't shatter, you'd just be um, taking this little gasket off here and cleaning the surface up really well and mounting your new pump. But, if you're like us and your pump seized, and the uh, cam just shredded the guy. Oh, and on the bright side with the cam, you can't tell because it's dark, but it looks like it didn't damage the keyway in the end of the cam, what locks into the guy. So that's ah. good. But anyway, if this happened to you, the next step you should be taking, like what we're about to do, is take the dumb little vanity cover off, and then we're pulling the valve cover to get all the other loose pieces that are lost up there and that's a that's a two birds one stone situation fellers because it's already leaking anyway <laughs> that sucks <laughs> and to pull this uh vanity cover thing there's a t30 torx bit there and you take the oil filler cap off and then you can slide that up but make sure you get your vacuum and a screwdriver and you get in here and clean all around the edge of that oil filler cap because when you take it off and lift this thing up you're gonna dump all the dirt that gets trapped in there because yeah what a stupid design <laughs> all the road dust and all the dirt that you drive through that comes up and swirls around in the engine base settles all in here so if you just take that off and lift this up you're gonna dump a cup of dirt into the top of your motor so yeah, clean that out first, pull a bolt, take the lid off, and then she'll pop off. And then after that bolt and you take your lid out of the way, there's one here, it lines up there, and one more here. Those are like pushy poppy tabs, so you'll kind of have to wiggle and boop, and then that comes up. 
then we should be able to get this guy right off. It like locks in around some hoses and pipes. Okay. And then now we can see the valve cover. That's good. Hey, at least it's not leaking too bad. When these valve covers get really bad on the motors that are set up like this, that uh, valley down in the middle where your spark plugs are, it'll fill up with the oil. So at least it's not leaking that bad. Too bad it's got a bunch of uh, metal bits in there. Now that we've gotten down that far to our coils removed, I've come down here and I've taken this coolant line loose from the turbo. Make sure you got a drain pan down there because she'll be draining. Now it appears, see it runs across the corner of our cover here, so it looks like I need to take it loose from the hose clamp there and over here and just get that whole pipulator out of there. I've got my wire harness all over to the side. It had one ground bolt here. I don't think I caught in the time lapse, but that's just a ground bolt and your coil, guys. That moves over out of the way. I unplugged this guy. That's the harness to the fuel injectors. And I just took the fuel line loose here. You can pull the fuse for the fuel pump and crank the engine over and that will leave relieve your fuel pressure over here i didn't bother to do that because it's not that much fuel that comes out the end of it just make sure your hands over it and you're wearing eye protection when you first crack it loose because right when you first crack it loose it's gonna out in like every direction just a small tiny little bit and then there'll be a little drizzle of fuel come out of it and then she'll stop so that's not too big a deal. Back here on the back side, there's a bolt I just removed for that clamp that holds that short line in place. And down here, she curls around and wraps back to there. I'm assuming maybe this is a fuel filter housing situation. Either way, it looks like I need to take it loose right there because that seems to be the only way to get this hard line unless yeah that'll flip up out of the way but the end of the hard line is still going to be all in the way of that valve cover coming off so we need to take it loose down there and I'm going to try to see if I can't undo the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this fuel rail in place and probably everything down there too undo the bolts that hold it in place down there and maybe it won't just like rock forward a little bit because there seems to be enough clearance for this to slide up around it and we're gonna pull the four bolts out of that throttle body right there because she's in the way too all right now I've got all my bolts loose at the top and the bottom of the fuel rail, except all the little Allen screw guys that are actually holding the rail to the fuel injectors. I think, because I have like just a hair of wiggle room here, I might be able to pop up here, you know what I mean, maybe. If not, I just have to take all those Allen screws out and take that assembly off. Moving over here, these little plastic evap whatever the majiggy hoses these are with the stupid little tamper per screws because they really want the home mechanic to have a hard time. These things are incredibly fragile and impossible to take loose. I've already got one. This guy just snapped right off when I was trying to undo his connector on the air hose. This one over here comes down, ties into the turbo, 
right here. There's a quick disconnect hit fitting right there, but they have it on such a hard 90 degree angle. There's no way to get a quick disconnect tool in there and undo it. So I had to come over here with the PB blaster and work it loose from this guy going in with my little stabby poking tool, sliding that in and working it all the way around and getting the hose unstuck from the plastic. So now both of the EVAP lines are loose and the throttle body is taking the four bolts out and set to the side there. So it looks like maybe possibly the next thing we'll do is take our 11 billion bolts around the outside edge and the inside edge of the cover and find out that we need to take the fuel rail loose. <laughs> okay. Now, to get to this, the point where we're at, all I had to do was take the little fuel pressure sensor guy out. That bolt right there comes from this big bracket, two half inch bolts that hold all that wiring loom mess in place. I took the back one loose, took the front one out and tilted her backwards. Leaving the fuel rail in place makes it where you can't quite take the whole valve cover off, but you can get it up plenty high enough to get up in here and collect on the rest of our broken pieces. Yeah, see there's, there's a couple of them in there. Those need to not be in there. There's another one back over that way. Yeah. But now we can get in here, clean out all our broken pieces, and put some brake clean on a rag, run around the gasket mating surface, get it all cleaned up, and I can snake my old gaskets, the two-piece guys, I can like pick him up, move the valve cover around and work it around the guy, slip the new ones on. And yeah, then we can close the clamshell back on and stick the new vacuum pumpulator guy on. And hopefully she doesn't have to do this again in the next 50,000 miles. Make sure when you're in here cleaning all these pieces out, you take a rag and soak up the oil that's in this little crevice right here. Because there will be a whole pile of the pieces right there. And here is all the broken bits and pieces off of our snout. Make sure when you're cleaning yours out here, you do a really good inspection all down here in that lower part underneath our cam down there where that oil is, making sure that you don't have any more little broken pieces hanging out down here because they'll surely work their way down to the end of this and get all hung up in our timing chain situation and fall into the oil pan and It'd just, it'd just be a bad time because of a stupid, poorly designed vacuum pump. Yeah. Now I've got my outside gasket surface all cleaned up around. Next we're gonna move to the inside one. Yeah. And by the way, fellers, I definitely wouldn't recommend leaving the fuel rail in place. The only reason I have is because, uh, you see those guys down there? The little Allen hex key fellers? I ain't got the right size guy for the feller. I got one that's close, but we're not about to risk stripping one of those out because you can technically do this with that in there and with the valve cover just clamshell partially open, it just really sucks and it makes it difficult to clean your gasket surfaces and whatnot. But other than that, it is doable, but I would definitely recommend pulling that fuel rail. So all you have to do is take all those 
whoop, get your light. All you got to do is take all those little uh, bolts out and gently wiggle this guy back and forth and it's going to pop up out of those fuel injectors. And when you do that, it may appear that there's only one O-ring down there, but you, you'll have two O-rings in each spot, so eight total. But when you take it apart, uh, I think they're different colors like green, green and black, but you're going to see one of the uh, uh, O-rings be left down there in the hole you go into, and one will be like stuck up in your guy here. If you don't notice it, you might think there's only one set of O-rings. And then when you go to slide this back into it, instead of the other O-rings seating back in where they need to, they're gonna get pinched and you're gonna have a high pressure fuel leak. So yeah, it's not like difficult, but when you wiggle that out, you just have to pay attention and slide both of the O-rings back in place before you put her back down. That way they don't get pinched in between the sandwichy part of the guy. Yeah. All right. Now we've got our valve cover back in place and put all the bolts back in around it. Those guys tighten down from the center out like in a crissy cross pattern starting in the middle working outwards. They're all eight foot pounds. And now that we got that back together, we're putting the fuel rail back in. All these 10 millimeter bolts go down to five foot pounds. And then we can put more stuff together from there. All right. Now I've got my nuts tightened back down on the, uh, this has something to do with the turbo. Don't remember what it does. Those turbo things. But I had to take those loose if I didn't tell you earlier when we were pulling the valve cover up. That tab right there runs into this rib on that guy and you can just loosen the bolts, slide it out of the way, and then lift the cover. I may have said that earlier, don't remember. But either way, those are tightened back down. Put the fuel line back in back here. And tighten the bolts back up on that bracket. Now I'm going to put the oil coolant line, I mean turbo coolant line, you don't want an oil coolant line. We're going to put that guy back in place, making sure to, uh, we got two copper washers here, making sure to have one copper wash on each side of our fitting here. So one here and one on the back, otherwise it's going to leak. All right. Now that we got our coolant line reconnected at its three points, one, two, three, four points, make sure you clean up those uh, little copper washers. They're actually like copper washers coated in rubber, and the underside of the head of that bolt has a layer of rubber on it. So I don't believe I would uh, recommend using wire brushes or a wire wheel to clean those. I just scrubbed on them with a shop towel and clean the rubber surfaces up really nice so that'll really prevent on the leakages there next we moved up put the coils back in place then i could take the wire harness and lay it back over and reconnect the uh, harnessy holiday clicky point here and there and now we can start reattaching all our connections Got one back there, don't forget him, the big main guy here. And we're gonna, we have one ground and right down here is a second ground. We're gonna clean those up real good with a wire brush while we're in there. And then now we finally got to install the part which was broken while we were in here in the first place. And putting that guy in is pretty simple. You just look down at what direction your keyway guy is sitting and then you turn the pump where she'll go in there and lock into place with it. And then you can reinstall your three 13 millimeter bolts down there. And I thought this was weird. The same bolt that was like really loose, like it was never tightened before, came in the new, the new vacuum pump. It didn't come with the other two bolts, but it came with one bolt in the same spot that it was loose before. So I thought that was interesting. Maybe uh, maybe that's why it never got tightened up before. I don't know. That's, that's weird. 
But yeah, all three of them are in there and tightened up now, so that's good. Then we can take our fitting up here, it clicks right back down in. When you're plugging all this harness together, everywhere where the uh, clips are, they work in the reverse where we took them out. You know, you had to slide the red part up to take it out. It'll click on, and then you can reach over and push the little tab, doop, and it makes another click down. So she's like a two-step click process. And yeah, we also mounted the throttle body back up. And I took it out in the yard and cleaned it all out again too, since mine as well. It's right there. Okay. Now I've got the intake tube hooked back up. That's really neat. It just pops back on. But make sure you got your big clip seated all the way back in, and then it just snaps in place. And over here, where I had a broken evaporator, whatever that guy does, pipe. Yeah, I think that's positive crankcase ventilation, maybe. Probably not, because she's turbo, but whatever. Those things are really fragile, and it cracked apart here. And right there, I had a piece of the heat shrink that fit nice and snug on there so that one sealed up that way down here i think this is 5 8 heater hose it fit nice and tight over both ends of it so that worked out cool to seal off those two leaks and now we are ready to drop our battery back in place maybe after we vacuum the dirt out but we'll drop our battery back in place hook that back up start the car before we put the pretty vanity cover thing back on top we'll look in here and make sure that we don't have any fuel leaks because remember we wiggled the rail around we took the line loose here and there so we just want to fire it up and look all over the place we took coolant lines here and there and there loose so we just want to visually inspect everything that we took loose and put back together and make sure they're all sealing well before we hide everything with a dumb plastic cover all right it's a lot of pieces around the battery but things sure look all nice and shiny when you wipe all the dust off now we've got our battery completely reinstalled and lost my train of thought what are we doing <laughs> yep but now we got our battery back reinstalled the uh, only fasteners we got left to put in are that one little black bolt the other bolt there is the uh, extra one we got because of the vacuum pump and the only pieces left to go on are the the little rubber i mean foam thing and the cover so it's about time to fire it up and look for leaks. All right, well that's good. All fired up, no new leakages yet. So that's always a good sign. Did find one more problem though. Her battery that's like hardly over two years old is already losing a cell i've had it over here on the chair up off the concrete and charged it up like ran two three cycles on the battery charger because uh i had to jump it off to pull it in the shop and uh yeah it's saturday and she runs right down to like ten and a half volts so that battery's got a weak cell in it that's gonna put her not being able to start soon gonna have to replace that battery but hey at least she still runs smooth there's always a chance when those stupid vacuum pumps fail and lock up like they do hopefully this one will last a little longer it doesn't have the screen on the oil inlet hole so maybe she'll last longer than the last one did but when those things lock up and abruptly stop it's not very nice on your variable valve timing cam at this end and it can cause damage to things luckily though she's running pretty smooth so it looks like she got in the clear on that one and didn't didn't do a bunch of major timing damage on that end i didn't price any of it but i'm i'm sure the uh the gear that it would have hurt if it did hurt it, I'm sure that's expensive, and I bet it comes in one big set. And and it looks like you 
got to pull the motor out to do that. So yeah, we're really glad she's running smooth. And it's got a normal feel and brake pedal again, so hey, hey, that's always good. You need that pretty bad. Now, that wraps up the brake issue video. So that's good. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. But if you care to know a little more about this car, hang out for another minute. <laughs> You may notice that um, she's really dusty, indicating it's it's been here for a while. Yeah, it broke again. <laughs> this car has 170,000 miles on it, and apparently that's as far as GM wanted them to ever go. Because, uh, remember me saying here a little bit ago she had a bad battery? Well... I started the car, ran it for a while. We drove it to the end of the shop. This is this is my next project. She's a Grand Prix. Anyway, we drove it to the end of the shop. I changed the oil in it. We started it again. It was all happy, but of course the battery was dead. Me and the old lady took our friend to an auto parts store. We bought her a new battery, put it in the car, and it would never start again. But it didn't exhibit signs of like, you know, security battery issues some cars you have to do a uh battery relearn nonsense it's this big scam to make you have to go to a dealership to put the battery in well this isn't one of those so <laughs> yeah that's not good after we put the new battery in um nothing worked everything would turn on the car acts normal when you go to like put the it'll put the key on it doesn't have a key because it's stupid it has a button but when you get in the car with your key fob and press the button it does like normal but i'm pretty sure it went brain dead because it lost connection with everything it doesn't read the tire pressure sensors it doesn't read the fuel gauge in the tank the gauge just reads empty on the dash now it also thinks the car is in gear when it's not in gear pretty much yeah it just lost connection with everything it has all sorts of errors on the dash and as far as i can tell it doesn't have anything to do with the new battery so i think maybe her computer brain box the stupid thing that's a sensitive computer they put right next to the hot engine bay under the hood and the elements yeah i think that went bad on her <clears throat> and it would make sense too because she said before she had the brake issue we were having other weird issues where the car would start like normal and run great and then other times she'd like go to the store come back out and the car would kind of spin over a bunch of times before it started and then when it did run it would misfire and run really rough and then it wouldn't. It would kind of just shift back and forth. So I think that's a good sign that her computer was going brain dead. Because it was like intermittent misfire issues. And there is no other reason for her to have a misfire on this car. Having solid compression and everything else being fine. But yeah, just the fact that that was intermittent and weird and swapping back and forth is a good sign. The brain was getting stupid. And yeah, now I'm guessing after we got a nice hot new battery in there, whatever circuits in the brain that were starting to short out just zzz, the rest of the way. Because uh, yeah, it went really dumb right after the new battery. So now our friend has to um, pay for a dealership diagnostic calls. I'm sure that'll be cheap. I'm pretty sure it needs a new brain. And... Of course, GM cars are, well, I guess Chevy, is like the only cars that you can't just open the brain box and perform brain surgery on it yourself. Um, several other brands I looked up online, we could ship the brain box out and have somebody go through, fix it, and send it back, but <laughs> not this one. This one, the only option is the dealership, so that's probably going to cost a lot of money. And our friend still owes like a couple grand on the car, so that's nice. Anyway, probably going to be taking her to the dealership, 
finding out how insane it's going to be getting a new brain paid for and installed and whatnot. And if that's too expensive, she might just have to turn the car in and we're going to go find a good old 90s model, early 2000s she um, Chevy, no, <laughs> Toyota, what's the word, Camry or Corolla, because those are wonderful solid little cars known for going a million miles and that's what our friend needs she spends a lot of time on the highway you know what i mean i'm working on this car over here now it's going to be a whole nother video series but it's uh fixing it up for another friend of mine that doesn't drive near as often as the friend that owns this car does so this thing is going to be a really good reliable ride but she's got over 200,000 miles and you know Transmission problems are, eh, might happen with this one. But other than that, this is a friggin' great car. The old Grand Prix were built really well, and that's the 3800 in there. So that's going to be an excellent car for my one buddy. But this girl, however, the one that drives this car, she, uh, she's been known to travel from state to state all the time and just put thousands of miles on them. So we're going to find her a Toyota. And I think she'll be a lot better off. But anyway, yeah, that's cool. You just you just gotta love that. Uh, I'm glad we at least got to save her, you know, the money of getting the vacuum pump replaced and the valve cover pulled off and all that, because I'm sure that would have been a thousand dollars. At least we saved her that, but that is so stupid. Right after we fixed the car, dead battery. Put a new battery in it, dead brain. <sighs> all right then, I quit. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that just does not further, you know, diminishes my faith in the stupid modern technologically controlled rigs. But anyway, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. We'll give an update on this guy eventually at some point. But the next videos that'll be coming out is the, hey, look, we got a Pontiac. Yes. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.